You look like you're busy doing something else. No, I'm just looking. This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. I don't want to interrupt just your looking there. No, you're fine. What's what's going on? I, don't know, I thought we started the podcast or something. Okay, like well we can start the podcast. I can do. I can multitask. You have no idea <laughs> how well I can multitask. You know what? I know exactly what we're doing. I have a rough idea. <laughs> a little give or take. Okay. A little super momness of how you can multitask. <laughs> you know how I know that? It's how? based on the things that you either do or tell me about, and I wonder, how did you even survive that? <laughs> and you're not even frazzled in the least that that happened. It's like, I would take a week off if I had to go through that. Yeah, I know. That's nuts. Just another life, another day in the life of a mom. Wow. Of Charity Brown. Wow. Really? Yes. Okay. So anyway. So we, uh, you had a good weekend? I did. Good. We were up north, though. We were up around Bancroft on Bentley Lake. I'd ask yes. the lake. I said, like friends of ours have a cottage up there. So we went up for the day and had a wonderful time and woke up yesterday morning to the smoke. Yeah, which I was surprised to hear. So Not was that I, I didn't know it was still going on, but mm-hmm. after the three or four days there where it was so horrible here, it cleared up. Yeah. And it's awful, but as a human being, out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. For sure. So I had kind of thought we were in the clear. Things were good. And because it's a cottage and they're not there all the time, we were all surprised on Sunday. Really? Okay. And apparently, uh, Algonquin had a an advisory for air quality and breathing as a result of the smoke. Oh. And I, again, I've, I've lost all track of that. I assume, well, that's over with. That's done. And it wasn't. So if you're up north or if you're heading up there, because here we go into vacation season, uh, it's still a fire ban in Bancroft and north. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure how far it extends. Actually, is it north of seven completely? Like El Dorado, Bannock I think it might be. Because someone was, we were commenting on it on the weekend, because with Canada Day coming up on Saturday, right. we we tend to do fireworks. Mm. And someone said, well, can you? Because there's a fire ban. In Whoa, Northumberland, there's yeah. no fire ban. Or oh. Trent Hills, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lifted it shortly after we had the smoke and because a, r- a storm came through and that seemed to alleviate. And I think I think they've all been lifted. Okay, in our area, right? In Cross our Cordy? area. Yep. Um, but yes, north of seven, I think it's pretty safe to say, yeah, it's still in effect. In, in areas up there, be very careful. Uh, make sure that you're aware. It's posted aware. everywhere. Yeah, it is. So no, you funny. cannot yeah. plead ignorance. You cannot yeah. pretend you don't know. Mm-hmm. So pay attention. And if in doubt, just don't do it. Very true. But as you mentioned, yeah, with Canada Day, I hadn't thought about that, about yeah. fireworks. But we're going to get enough rain this week. I think <laughs> we will be okay. Yeah, I saw Which the is good. I'm all, I'm all for that. It's supposed to clear up by Saturday, sun and cloud. And I had said originally back in February that the forecast would be sunny with a high of 32. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's going to be about 24. That's so I was a little okay. bit off. That's comfortable. Maybe 32 at the Humidex. Because I'll tell you right now, the weekend was stinking hot. It was hot. It was it not was okay. It was hot. No. It was hot. We I love well. It. Um, the Saturday we had football, and can I talk about that for a Please, little bit if you I don't would mind? Love you but then about yesterday football. we were at the ball diamond all afternoon, and it, w- it wasn't as bad yesterday. But being out Saturday watching the football game was so hot. Like it was just, there was a breeze every once in a while, but it was almost like that heavy heat. Mm-hmm. It just, it was hot. You felt like you were cooking. The word is oppressive. Thank you. It was oppressive. Oppressively hot. It was so hot. Yeah. We're just waiting for the showers to come. But yes, we were in Belleville on Saturday for, um, surprisingly enough, me at a football game. Because uh, Campbellford, the Campbellford Titans, which is in- incorporates grades six, seven, and eight, was taking on the Belleville, I want to get this right, Belleville East Defenders. Okay. Defenders of the championship. They won last Defenders. year. Defenders. And they were in the final at Mary Sills Park. And it was so, I was so excited. Yeah. I don't. I don't follow, you know, I don't follow football. No. I really don't know a lot about football. It's not a sport that I well, make an on. effort to watch. Here's something we didn't ask about on the no. show this morning. What? Is this the first live football game you've ever been to, or did you go in high school? Okay, so with this, no, I never, they didn't have football when I was in high school. It's back. Now okay. they have football in high school. 
there was a game this team played in Campbellford, their only home game of the season, because nobody wants to come to Campbellford, apparently, because uh, it <laughs> incorporates ga- uh, teams from Napanee, Belleville, Bayside, Bancroft, and then Campbellford. So they did have one home game, okay. and I went to that because our nephew's oh, on the team, and we right. know a lot of the kids on the team. So we did make a point of going to that game. Because there aren't that many children in Campbellford. <laughs> They needed them all for the team. <laughs> there were 50 kids on this team because they don't make cuts. They don't cut. They did cap it sure. at 50 yeah. because there was a waiting list, which I did not That's realize. That's amazing, though. But there were 50 kids. It was amazing because when you saw the game on Saturday, you saw the defender's bench and then you saw the Titans bench. Kids. Exactly. They had like rows of kids. <laughs> On on our side and like just one bench on the other, um, but it's pretty it's pretty neat and everybody now maybe because I have a child that age Nathan doesn't play on the team he has no interest which is totally fine yeah. totally fine but yeah. we were there cheering everybody else on, um, but maybe because he is that age it feels like this is a big big deal like there's a lot of they have a big following people know that this team is out there that yeah. these kids are playing. And the smaller the city, the, the more likely word of mouth yeah. gets around that this is a big deal yeah. for the kids, right. So everybody knows if you're not on the team, you would know yeah. someone or a family participating in this team. So it was nice to see there were a lot of people from Campbellford there to cheer them well, it's on. it's a championship game. It, Here we it go. was a big deal. So going after this, after the first half, we were down, it was 14-8. Belleville East Defenders with a 14-8 lead at the yes, half. Yes, at the half. And then we came back and Cue we rallied. the comeback. And 22-14 was the final score. Defense won it in the second half. Defense wins championships, I'm telling you. It I was. I keep telling you that. It was pretty awesome. I was very, very impressed nice. with our kicker. So the scoring still has me confused. I know a touchdown six. Six. I thought the kick was then one. Correct. But they got two. Now, and then there was something, I don't know what it's called, but they threw the ball. Like, it looked like they were going to, was it going to kick? But then they ran with it, and they got two points for that as you well. Get two, you if get two you point conversion, line. right. One if you kick it, two if you make it into the end zone from the two-yard line. Yes. But they got two points if they kicked it. Because yeah, there were some really good kicks. Okay. Yeah, that, that's new to me. Yeah. But that's okay. Because that's how they got the eight. Yeah. But I'm all for it. So yeah, so they ended so up with three touchdowns. All of it, but I caught myself yelling oh, <laughs> in the second you. half. No. I know. I, well, and that's how I know. I'm like, wow, okay. I think I like this because <laughs> yep. I was yelling Great. at them. I'm like, come on, run, go. I haven't gone to an NFL game since 2017 when we went to Gillette Stadium in New England, and mm-hmm. I told my buddy, "We're going this fall." He's like, "No, oh, I don't know." <laughs> that's the incorrect answer. The incorrect, the incorrect answer is, okay. mm, I don't know. The correct answer is, oh, my God, are you sure? Yes. And I know which game I want to go to. I know the weekend I want to go because we've gone first weekend in December and late November to New England. Mm-hmm. Oh, incorrect. Beautiful. No. No. Oh. Bitterly, bitterly oh. cold. Ridiculously cold. So like we're then. cold. So you can't. So have you go any like fun. the first day of September. No, we're, I'm thinking of going the first. They're playing Washington the first weekend in November, and that's fine because that's, that's fall okay? in New England. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That, that would can be get down to minus one. Yeah, that's okay though. It's only after Halloween. So daytime, like a one o'clock kickoff. Daytime temperatures are about like three or four degrees Celsius. That's fine. We were at a Sunday night game against Denver mm-hmm. the end of November, the weekend after Thanksgiving. And it was, there were season's ticket holders who were leaving while we were tailgating. The game hadn't started, who said they have never gone to a game as cold as that. That was the coldest I've ever been in my and life. And being Canadian, we're hardy yeah. enough to withstand it? So we're sitting in the truck while we're having Darlene, which is my buddy's wife. She goes out to the tailgate to stir the chili because we're not going out there. It's crazy cold out there. Watching porta potties flip over from the wind. <gasps> oh, my God. And I think sometimes there are people inside. Like, that's the windiest, coldest thing. Did you go to thing. the game? Then we went to the game. Oh, my God. The New England Patriots were losing, I think it was 16 nothing at the half or 20 nothing at the half, came back to win it in overtime. <gasps> so you but were there I've longer. Never more, yeah. <laughs> like, past midnight, I've never been more cold in my life. Oh, and by the way, we were upper deck. So there's no blocking the wind. So early November's fine with me in the afternoon. Thank you. Start tailgating. Because I... 
post pandemic, like let's go, let's go have some yeah. fun again. But football, well, good for you. Sixty eight thousand people in a stadium. Wow. It's like being at Marianne Sills with parents. <laughs> It's just a I lot think, of cheering going on. I would think it might even be a little better. It's a little bit more exciting. Because I will say the the game at home, I didn't make a peep. I really didn't pay that close attention. Oh. I don't think a home okay. game. Because yeah. you're visiting. You're talking to people. There were a few more people there. And mm. we were tailgating at that one. So that Whoa. kind of played into it, too. So this was a lot more exciting. I don't know if I could do an NFL game. I am not there yet. If mm-hmm. I take in some more maybe of these games, because yeah. Ben cannot wait Ben's got, so he's in grade five next year. So once he's in grade six, he can play. He can be on this team. So he's got a year and a half to, well, no, it's a spring league, right? It's a spring league, because I want to say eight eight Mm. weeks they've been playing. The Mm. beginning of May, they started. And they just, this wrapped up their season, of course. So So the the quarterback, quarterback in grade eight? Uh, The majority of the players were grade grade eight. eight. Including A lot of the first years. A nephew? nephew, Yeah. uh, He's in grade six. Grade six, okay. So this is his first year. So not a lot of field time, but they're up front about that. And a lot of them are so small, too. Yeah. Like even Ben said that. It's so funny to see them with shoulder pads and helmets. He's like, Mom, I know that my first year's not, I'm not going to do a lot. I know I'm going to be smaller, but like grade eight. Like he's already planning ahead. Like he's all about it. He's got two years. He could grow. He could get big. I know he he's very he's athletic. got the shoulders That's for the it. Thing. And he yeah, he is yeah. very athletic. So running back, you know, give him a little zhu zhu and then take it outside. Eight yard you know, gain. We'll see. They tackle pretty hard though, Mark. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see how this goes. But well, of course with the championship win, this was the big reason why I wanted to tell you. So not only did I have did I go to the football game and actually have somewhat was able to follow it somewhat, um, but we had the fire trucks out on That's Saturday. That's the best. That's I say we like it was me, but no, the fire trucks came out Saturday through Campbellford, and one of the coaches is a paramedic, so it was followed by an ambulance. So they had oh, doubly like God. the sirens were going. They had I think five pickup trucks full of kids. Like it was, right? It was quite well, you a would parade. Have with that. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. with fifty kids, yeah. <laughs> Well, and coaches. And, and they all had seatbelts. Um, of course. Of course. Safety first. That's so good. I just yeah. love that about small towns. I told I know. you. They Someone did actually said to me, they're like, so are you guys going to be talking about this? Because Mark likes the fire trucks. I love the fire trucks. I said, yes, we will. It's just, it's a thing kids remember. That's Absolutely, so good when the do. community just says, let's go. Let's get them yeah. out. Got to run the fire trucks anyway. Why not do it for a good cause? <laughs> Make Why sure not they do it work. something memorable for children? <laughs> Yep. You know, get them off the couch, get them involved, all good. Well, Never and, grow up to become society's problem. The fire chief was was with us on Saturday, not with us, but he was there on Saturday watching the game too. And I turned to him at one point and I said, so the fire truck's coming out? He's like, well, they got five and a half minutes, so I'll make the call in five and a half minutes. We'll yep. get it going. Said, That's yes, so excellent. That's so good. So congrats to all of those. Yeah, and then they did really but well. But they, they've got to stop because there's still soccer, baseball, golf, which isn't organized, but so many young people are doing it sure. now. Sure, yeah. That well, it is organized. A lot of courses will have a junior league. And I Do know, they? That's I know amazing. Workworth has a like a parent youth at Sunday nights, I think. So you sign up, and it is a league. So you can go out with, I know a lot of father-sons that go out and do it. On That's Sunday nights. so wonderful. Mm-hmm. When I was in Windsor growing up, there was an extremely active junior golf scene, to use a 70s word. And uh, so there would be literally a tournament a week. Wow. Where you would sign up wow, through the Windsor Star. Hardcore. And you would <laughs> mail it in with your five dollar entry fee. Yep. Oh, wow. So that you could be in that tournament. And my dad would drive me. And I would go out and choose something obscene. You like, were in it. Oh, yeah. I'd go oh, to wow. all of them. And depending on your age, you would that. slot you into these things. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, I, I, I loved it. And you get to see the same guys. You know, maybe there were a like hundred of us. Circuit? Yeah. And after a while, you know, it's like. <laughs> it's like the PGA Tour for kids. One year, I think the, the, the most enjoyable one I ever had was one year I played with a guy who had just won the tournament the week before. Mike Altenoff. He played uh, out How old of, would you have been? How old would I have been? 16. Okay. And he had just, well, actually, no, that no. He had just come third in the Ontario Amateur as a 16-year-old. Oh, wow. And we were playing Dominion Golf Course with Mike Chuddock. Mike Chuddock went on to win the tournament. I'm playing with these guys. Why? 
Why am I paired up with these guys as a threesome? But when I found that out, I was so excited because I really, I mean, they were just so good. So so I think Chudik shot 68. Mike Aldenhoff might have shot 74. He didn't play very well that day by his own admission. And I think I came in with a pretty smooth 89. <laughs> But the nicest guys, and yeah. but that's you would go out and you would get your your round of golf, your hot dog, your pop. You'd get a free golf ball. You'd get like you'd get stuff, and it was just so exciting when that's I was really ten great. or eleven when I started. And then after that, it's like I'm going to play six tournaments this summer. Well, yeah, you mentioned sixteen because I was going to say like these are young kids like Ben. Yeah, we we could have signed him up a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and he could be playing in this league. Yep. You start out, by, so you get into, I can't even remember what it was, just soon. I think they just called it junior and senior. So the junior winners would shoot 88, 89, 12. I'm still shooting as a 16-year-old, thinking I'm on top of the world. <laughs> then to play with these guys, these guys are really good. But then again, same thing. What do they do as soon as golf course is done? They all curled. Oh. Like they were all athletes all yeah. the time. There was all always of us were. something. Yeah. So it's like I got to stop doing that because now it's golf season. Same thing with these kids. Not so good. And, and, and kudos to parents who keep driving them. <laughs> I've talked about it a million times. Yes. Like I, this th- week, the amount of organized right. organization parents do to get them to baseball, soccer, football, golf, gymnastics, ball hockey. What am I missing? And it's that, nice and that, that you, and that. You see this because you want to hear our week. So Nathan had quite a busy week a couple of weeks ago because he's playing both ball and soccer. He's got okay. baseball and That's soccer. That's nuts. So yeah, we're crazy. So this week. And you have two kids. Th- yeah. So yeah. this week. So yesterday, both boys had ball. Today, uh, Ben has ball in Duro. Tomorrow, uh, Ben has ball in Campbellford. Nathan has soccer. Wednesday. Okay, we don't have anything Wednesday. Whoa. Wednesday's a good night. Wow. Thursday, Ben's going to Napanee, Nathan's going to El Dorado, and then we're off Friday. So Ben has ball four nights this week. And then Canada and, Day. Yeah. Wednesday's the last day of school. Nice Wednesday's calm day. the last day of school. First day of school, first day of summer vacation, bang, you're off already at ball. Yeah, t- we're out that night. Yeah. And Nathan's missing soccer practice because that's also a night for practice. So oh, there's been a little a couple of over uh overlays, but it's gonna be conflicts. Um, overlapping. But yeah, it's it's nuts. So I appreciate you saying that, Mark. That being said, though, absolutely love it. And yeah. if it, you talk to a parent, they wouldn't do it if they didn't love it. I love watching my kids do things they love to do, like things that they're interested in and engaged in. It's it's amazing. I will sit all day and watch them. Most parents I hear are frustrated with the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah, frazzled oh. by it. And I oh, often it's, ask oh, it's them. Frazzled. Oh, no, yeah, but no. I, I ask them why they do it, and they, they feel that they have to for their kids. And it's like, I, I don't know. I'm not saying deny your kids, but maybe ask your kids if they want to be mm-hmm. as busy as they see you are and f- either feel guilty about it or if you, if you ask them, maybe it's like, no, you don't have to do this for me. I'll, I'll do one thing. But if you're, you know, like have that conversation with your kids because your family shouldn't be so stressed There out. is a difference between, Then yes. your home life is frustrating. Absolutely. Or you're not getting meal time together or whatever. If it's detrimental right? to the family, yeah. then yeah, you need to step back and really look. Your kids don't need to be in everything because they will get tired out. Yeah. Um, but as you know, with Ben, he loves everything. And we have had to say to him, look, we can't. We yeah. can't do everything. So look, mm-hmm. what do you want to do? What do you really want to do? If it comes down to soccer or baseball, what do you want to do? And he said baseball. We're like, okay. And he loves it. So we're doing baseball. Nathan, the only <laughs> Nathan's kind of a late bloomer, but he really took to soccer this winter. And he wanted to try baseball. So we thought, okay, for this year, we will try it. We are not doing this again next year. But so you're going to have the chance to try both and then you're going to decide which one do you want to do more because, yeah, but again, they love it. And it's, it's hard to say no when they love it. You want to be able to right. yeah. to support them and, and push, not push them, but encourage them yeah. to, to do it because I want them to be active. I don't want them to be. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to be shy either or hesitant. If there's something they want to try, try it. Go do it. Yeah. It's a social thing, too. Uh, absolutely. A hundred percent. And after yeah. COVID, I know we keep going to the pandemic. It's true, though. The more, the better. Get them out. Yeah. And for mom and dad, too. Yeah. <laughs> Gets us out of the house, too. Maybe more than we'd like sometimes. Charities discovered tailgating. <laughs> 
But this weekend, looking forward to getting looking there forward as well for Canada stuff going Day. On. We had Tiffany on the show this morning. We'll get her on the podcast later on this week to talk more about Canada Day as we get closer. All this week for Galaxy of Games, we're going to have Canadian-isms. Uh, tomorrow, text to speech from a great Canadian song. Mm-hmm. Identify title and artist for your chance Today, to win. Today, we were talking about Canadian foods. Yeah. And it was an interesting list. I would agree with most of it, but there were some that were missing. It, the it, top 10 um, very Canadian foods. Yeah. And, and it, what amazed me is I would accept the 10 that showed up from our listeners after and said, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would pick those 10. Yeah. Like, because it was... bacon wasn't on the list. It was poutine, yes. Caesars, definitely. Donaire's. Um, what else was on there? Maple syrup, Maple of course. Syrup for sure. Smoked meat from Montreal. Uh, Saskatoon berries, Whatever. which I didn't know yeah. about. Uh, Bannock was the number one. Number one. Which is a fried bread. Um, I'm missing three. Maple syrup. I said maple syrup. Was uh, on there. What else was on there? I don't have the list in front of me. I apologize. But beaver tails weren't on there. Uh, back bacon wasn't on there. Uh, what was the another one that a, oh, a list? Ketchup chips was ketchup on the list. Ketchup chips was on the list. And yes. yet, Hawkins Cheesies Weren't. was not. And um, that's a little Kraft silly dinner, to me. not on the list. Butter not, tarts, not on the list. Not on the list. See, that's what I mean. Like, I, I would live with those people. I would party mm-hmm. Canada Day with list B before list A. That because I don't like that stuff I get, but all the fun stuff like butter tarts and yeah. Hawkins Cheesies and Kraft dinner and bacon. Yeah. <laughs> You are my people. Top it off with a beaver tail? Yes. 100%. You are my people. So an interesting list, and it is up on our Facebook page. If if there's a food there we mentioned that you disagree with or food that we didn't mention and you're thinking, where is Mm -hmm. blank? Get it on there. Uh, Nanaimo bars was also on the list. Oh, okay, right. Nanaimo Nanaimo bars. Of course. Nanaimo, BC. But uh, share your thoughts on our Facebook. And we will be posting stuff throughout the week, too, for you to share. Yep. As we get closer to Canada Day this Saturday, July the 1st, as always, if you're heading into the Quinty region for that or any other events this summer, including Waterfront and much more, you'll find that all at inquinty.ca. As you wake up tomorrow morning with Mark and Charity Mornings here on 95.5 Hits FM.